What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is John. Today I have for you a big box good. I'd like to show you this Ozark Trail backpack I picked up at Walmart for $65. Let's take a look at the build quality, the features, what differentiates this backpack from a standard travel backpack or back to school backpack, why you would want a hiking backpack. Let's see how many items we can fit inside and just how easy this is to pack. Of course, we'll try it on, see how comfortable it is, so you can get a good idea if this backpack will suit your hiking adventures this travel season. Now, the reason I say hiking and travel season is because given the current conditions of the pandemic, people are flocking outdoors and going on outdoor adventures which is why today I wanted to take a look at the Ozark Trail hiking backpack for $65 and review it for you. Let's go ahead and get into this first impressions and like I said, take a look at the features, try it on, pack it, and explain why having something like this is better than using your travel backpack or school backpack. So hiking is not only about seeing the great outdoors, but it's also about going to the upper limits of what is possible, of what is capable. It's seeing new heights, for lack of a better term. So being able to carry numerous items that would make your trip easier or more enjoyable is welcome in any occasion. So what I like to see here, while the bag is on my back, as you can see it's fully strapped. We're hiking, not stopping to take the bag off to reach inside and take things out. What I like is actually two zipper compartments at the cradle at each side of the hip. This is undoubtedly great for a small compact digital camera, identification cards, maybe a pocket knife, and undoubtedly a cell phone. So here is the 12 Pro iPhone, one of the larger iPhone models. And getting it in this side pouch actually works out pretty well. I will say that even though this is the 12 Pro, it's one of the larger sizes, the Pro Max is bigger and would probably struggle to fit inside this side pouch. So just keep that in mind. You do get side pouches, but if you're carrying a plus size phone, uh, just be aware that you'll have to carry it probably in your pocket. Now, because I always have something to complain about, and like I said, because exploring the great outdoors is about reaching and exceeding limitations, what I would have liked to have seen is a couple of extra hard points maybe on the straps to dangle things off of. So as you can see, you get a loop here, great for hanging maybe a compass or a flint or some kind of car key or house key or something. Anything you wanna hang off of this strap using a carabiner clip that you might need, like a flashlight for example, you can do that. But what I would have liked to have seen, what I have seen a lot lately on social media people and hikers being attacked by animals. So I would have liked to have seen maybe at least some kind of pouch for bug spray or maybe even mace. So being able to access your mace quickly or if you're hiking through a subtropical climate and getting bit by mosquitoes, something to quickly reach over and apply. Now you do get a couple of uh, drink compartments at each side. Uh, typically what you would find on any backpack or camera bag, so anything to put your water bottle in, it is actually at the back of the bag and a little bit harder to reach. So like I said, uh, would have been nice maybe to have an external compartment for mace or bug spray. Now for this portion of the video, just to prove my point that this bag is dry use only, not water resistant or waterproof in any way. Let's take this brand new leather case for an iPhone, stick it in the pocket, close the zipper, and apply water at the top of the bag. Now the good news here actually, as you can see, the water is beating right off the top of the bag. So potentially the material at the top of the bag is some form of water resistance. So let's go ahead and actually just apply more. Let's actually saturate the top of the bag and see if we can uh, break through the bag's defenses or the bag's line of defense. Now, as you can see, like I said earlier, 
the zippers are what make this bag for dry use only. As you can see, the zippers, they're a sort of uh, cotton fabric material. They are pretty much soaking up the entire water and are turning gray. Uh, like I said, the good news here is the water does feel like it's beating off this front pocket, but actually feels like it's going through to the other side. Now, as you'll see, the iPhone's actually perfect. It's not touched by water in any way. Whatever water you see on, it's probably from my fingers here. But just keep in mind, if you do get caught in the rain, shouldn't be bad, uh, but not designed for getting wet. Now, having this bag on for the first time, what I love is, of course, the padding at the back of the bag on the shoulder straps and at the waist. Now, as you can see, I have each buckle tightened down, one at my torso. It's a nice, hefty, thick buckle, and then a smaller, more lightweight buckle at the top of the chest for added comfortability. Now, like I said in some of my previous backpack review videos, what makes a bag safer to carry and the ideal way to carry a bag is at the top of your back where your shoulders are and your biceps and triceps are so you can actually pick things up and carry them. This bag, as you can tell, being that it can carry up to 50 liters, is designed to sit at the top of your bag. So not only do you get these additional features such as the padding and the buckle at your waist and the side cradle and the chest strap. As you can see, because it sits at the top of the back, you can actually carry heavier items in it. And also because it's contoured, it actually keeps items off of your back or raised off of your back. So not only are you unaware of what's in your bag, but also, the bag is doing probably half of the lifting power. Now, after wearing this for a couple of minutes, and the reason I say wearing is because the hood at the back almost feels like a rain jacket, and because it actually goes up at the back of the back and behind the neck up towards the back of your head, it actually makes it sort of warm and causes my neck to sweat. Uh, what I would have liked is perhaps a, maybe a piece of fabric actually to keep it softer at the back of my neck or maybe a different netting type material to actually keep it cooler. Uh, this obviously isn't a huge take back. You will be sweating obviously when you're out hiking and uh, going down a trail, but had this maybe been just a little bit more comfortable and better thought out, I wouldn't be complaining. In addition to support, let's talk about what makes this bag comfortable to carry. So because you will be packing it with roughly up to 50 liters or more worth of food and clothing and uh, accessories and things of that nature, all of which you would use hiking, you want your bag to be comfortable. So what I've noticed actually about Ozark Trail and Walmart backpacks in general, they typically lack in terms of padding, but not so with this bag. It's actually a point that I need to show and make because as you can see, plenty of padding at the waist. They have a waist strap and as you can see, it's a pretty robust buckle and also a chest strap. So not only at the waist, but also the chest. Couple this with the padding at the very back of the bag, which is probably three quarters of an inch thick at the lower back and even at the sides, this should be extremely comfortable to carry even though it's pretty heavy at 50 liters. Something you'll probably notice is the material of the bag. Even though it looks lightweight, it looks breathable, it looks airy, because of its tan and gray color schematic, it also looks military grade in some aspects. I think you could agree. It almost looks like a Desert Storm color camouflage backpack. It does lack military grade features such as water resistance, which is important if you're carrying electronic equipment or perishable food items, which shouldn't be a problem camping, but let's just say you're packing an extra pair of underwear or socks. Definitely keep them in a uh, water dry packet. 
or some kind of packaging to keep them dry because on Walmart's website, nothing about this backpack being waterproof or water resistant. So I think in a previous segment, talking about the uh, material and talking about the compartments, you might remember that my main complaint was this hood at the top of the bag could probably be better if it's strapped down to the center line of the bag, much like this bottom pocket here. So as you can see, two buckles at the bottom pocket. I was a little bit confused at first what those buckles were used for, but what I realized was there's a compartment at the bottom of this bag. So you can actually see it's gray at the portion of this bag and actually at the sides, at the sides are where you can store things like a water bottle or maybe even like a tripod for your camera. And then of course you've got the tan running up the rest of the bag, uh, demarcating the three additional top compartments. But this bottom compartment here is also usable and easily accessible. It's a nice, wide, deep pocket. You could put a variety of items in here. But one thing I would have liked to have seen, like I said earlier, is a buckle at the center line. Why they applied this uh, feature set at the bottom of the bag is a little bit beyond me because I would have liked to have seen these buckles perhaps at the center line of this bag, or at least just a single button at this buckle at the center line of this bag. Like I said, to keep this top hood closed. But just to quickly surmise that segment, there is a bottom pocket, which I did fail to mention earlier at the video. But the good news here is getting into the bag and accessing items at the ready, like water or a granola bar, or a camera if you want to take a really cool picture, shouldn't have to worry about getting into this bag and accessing it. Really nice hardware and pretty good build quality too. Different from other general backpacks I've seen is the way you open the main compartment. So as you can see, the main compartment, it's actually zippered on the side to give it some structure, but at the top is a drawstring and a bungee cord to actually keep things tight, almost like uh, something you would pack a lawn chair in, similar to that, but obviously much more durable to accommodate uh, accessories you might carry on a hiking trip and keep this bag from tearing. So one thing I actually dislike, given the fact this is a drawstring, drawstring opening at the top, is of course this flap, Ozark Trail, folds over top to keep things protected and to keep the bag for lack of a better term, closed. But what you'll notice here is moving this flap over top to cover the drawstring opening. What I would have liked to have seen is maybe a buckle attached at the end or maybe some kind of Vel Velcro strap here at the base of the bag to connect this top flap to keep it shut permanently. Now, aside from the main compartment at the top, you do get additional compartments on the front of the bag. So a half moon pocket or a half width pocket or half depth pocket at the top. Great for car keys, identification cards, wallets, uh, cell phones, maybe a pocket knife. And then of course, at the mid section of the bag or about halfway down, you get a larger pocket. It's much deeper, as you can see, it engulfs probably three quarters of my arm. Uh, it's wide enough, obviously, for a cell phone. You could probably store a mini tablet in here, a full-size tablet, not so much. But keep in mind also, like I said earlier, no waterproofing or water resistance. Anything in this compartment will get wet. Now, potentially the most interesting pocket on this backpack, and please leave a comment in the comment section below what you think this particular pocket is used for and designed for, is underneath the Ozark trail flap, you can see we have a uh, cloth lined pocket, similar to actually a camping bag. So not quite sure if this one is water resistant, it is a soft lining on the inside. Could probably keep things warm, but it's underneath the hood of the top of the bag here. So perhaps keep in mind what you put inside this because it will be resting at the top of your back behind your neck. 
as you can see, it is just a little bit taller than your general backpack in that this top piece does come up past the straps. But like I said, whatever this pocket here is at the top of the bag underneath this hood, let me know in the comment section below what you would use this for on a hiking trip. It's a pretty nice, wide, deep pocket, and it's got this really soft fabric lining. Now, shopping for this bag in store, you'll see that it actually has a capacity of 50 liters. Now, even though on the tag, it says nothing about having a water hydration system, you can even see just by looking at the bag, it doesn't come with a plastic hose or a water pouch. You will have to buy that on your own because as you can see here, there is a water drop labeled. Now this, you might think denotes this bag being water resistant, but actually it's a slot that runs underneath the lining of the bag to the inside of this pouch so you can run a water line and drink water as you're hiking. Now, even though this is the main compartment, you will be storing your main items in this compartment. What you'll actually notice is that at the top of the main compartment is a hook system. So it's a Velcro hook system that pretty much allows you to hang things off it, probably a water pouch so that you can drink while you're hiking. Now, what's really nice about this bag and what actually adds to a measure of safety is of course, hiking in the dark makes it really easy to see if you shine a flashlight on it. So you'll actually notice running up the side of the bag at the center compartment is two reflective accents. So using just this flashlight, you can not only see the reflective accents on the sides of the front of the bag, but you can also see that the coating itself, that this material is actually reflective in and of itself. So not only do you get these reflective accents here on the sides, which actually show up brilliantly, but also the main coating of the bag is reflective as well. Now, in the midst of all the complexity between all the different buckles and straps, let's quickly just go over one of the straps I think is most important. So, if you actually take a look at the shoulder strap, you can see that you can adjust it, obviously. And of course, if you look at the uh, waist strap, that is obviously adjustable. But what's really cool are actually some of the more customizable adjustment options, such as this one at the side of the cradle. So you can actually make this either loose around your waist or tight around your waist. So as promised at the beginning of the video, let's compare this hiking backpack to a Swiss gear commuter style backpack. So even though this backpack looks perfectly capable of taking on the hiking trail, it's got water bottle compartments. It's got several compartments at the front of the bag for storing miscellaneous items in. And if you flip the bag over, it's actually got plenty of support and padding, especially at the back along the sides, along the uh, torso and running down the lats and also good lower back support. But what I think you'll notice here, what makes this bag markedly different is first and foremost, the size. But like I was saying earlier, after actually having quite a few items in this Swiss gear bag, after having used this bag for quite some time, you'll actually notice that the items inside actually fall down to the bottom and actually become compressed at the bottom. So this bag almost sort of has a heavy pouch at the bottom, making this probably more difficult and cumbersome and potentially even more dangerous to carry around as where a bag like this hiking bag here, because it has contour to it, and because I think you saw the stainless steel uh, metal lining that you can actually take in and out of the bag, it will keep items from falling and collecting at the bottom and becoming dead or loose weight. Again, just making hiking a little bit safer and easier and a little bit more enjoyable. Anyways guys, that has been a first impressions of the Ozark Trail hiking backpack I picked up at Walmart for $65. Because I picked this up at Walmart, that makes it a big box good. Today, we talked about some of the features. You saw just how good this is at uh, keeping your items on the inside dry. Not water resistant or waterproofed in any way, but the material actually 
does a fairly decent job of beating water away. I think you saw the only downside to that demonstration was the zipper track came flooded with water. Like I said, not waterproof or water resistant in any way. Uh, we also took a look at the differences between this bag and a standard backpack, like a commuter backpack, like a Swiss gear backpack. I think you saw the Swiss gear backpack actually sort of accumulated at the bottom and actually becomes dead weight. This, on the other hand, has metal beams inside that actually keep a contour, that keep it stiff and rigid and easy to pack and make it more supportive and less strenuous on your back. Now, what also makes this less strenuous from a commuter style backpack is of course, you get waist straps and torso straps so that it fits more securely on your back. And also, I think you saw just how high this sat on my back. It sits at the top of the back, the perfect place to carry. This bag can carry up to 50 liters the perfect place to carry a backpack on a hike. Anyways guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this first impressions. Because COVID has ruined travel and being indoors and surrounded by other people, people are flocking outdoors and going on hiking vacations and hiking trips. So if you find yourself in the same situation, definitely check out this backpack at Walmart. $65, small price to pay in terms of hiking backpacks, of course, a little bit left to be desired here. What I would have liked to have seen actually is different color options. But with that being said, still a good backpack nonetheless and geared for hiking. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this first impressions. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell icon to get notified when I post to YouTube and share this video with friends and family. Thanks again so much for tuning in. My name is John. I will see you in the next video.